So I've worked all the way around doing the buttonhole stitch on the outside edge and then I've, tr I've cut away the two threads that I had laid in and I've done one more buttonhole stitch and I've come up through the back side of the first stitch so that I've now joined the entire edge. And then I've whip stitched, it's a little hard to do flat, through a couple of outside stitches just to get around that corner because I ended on a corner. And now I have to figure out how to tie off this thread. If you can manage it, you can run your needle through the previous threads that you've worked. I don't know if I have enough give in my thread to pull this big heavy needle through there. I'm going to try it. Depending on how tightly you've done that buttonhole stitch, you may not be able to do that in which case you may have to run the thread to the back and tie it off with sewing thread to anchor it in place. Um, I'm going to run it through a few more. Sometimes a few, you can get it through a few, one or two, but not several at a time. And then I'm going to run it through the back so that if I do have a little bit that shows it will be when I cut it it'll be on the back side and I had a thread escape here a little tail which is going to need to be trimmed um, but I don't know if I can do that with these scissors they're not very they're not very good to be careful not to cut your work that you're trying to preserve. And then of course you have other tails where you've added in threads that have to be trimmed away as part of the final piece. And now we're ready to remove this from the stitching. And to do that you can either use scissors or you can use an X-Acto knife to open the cloth up and cut the stitches here. And in this case, I think I'm going to need the exacto knife. That's why the zigzag stitch being in a complementary thread helps. Um, you see, but you don't want to use a complementary thread very much on your actual lace because sometimes little pieces are retained and you can't get them out of the lace when you cut it off and you don't want to have a contrasting thread um, showing in your finished product where a, a thread the same color would be less noticeable if you couldn't get it loose. So you can see this is one of the ways to, to rip this off. Very time consuming process, this. Now you can see I'm starting to get down to the stitches that hold the lace in place. And you do the same with those, you cut those as well. Now because those are stitched by hand they're not as tight and they're a little easier to cut than these outside stitches that I did on the sewing machine. So as I cut those then you can see on this side the lace begins to work itself three free and you will have little threads that have to be plucked from the lace. 
in this particular case I didn't stitch it down very tight I may be able to snip it off this way but I wouldn't recommend this on a real piece um, because you might accidentally cut your lace uh, and cutting from the back through the cloth prevents you from accidentally cutting your lace instead of just the basting threads. I did use a slight contrasting color for the demonstration instead of a matching color. But you can see how the lace comes free. Now it rolls and uh, twists a little bit because we did use pearl cotton and that has a tendency to do that. It can be stiffened and it can be um, pressed. 